Good afternoon. We have already formed a quorum and it's the scheduled time. The meeting of the security panel is now called to order. Item 1 on the agenda, confirmation of the minutes of our last meeting is in paper CB bracket 2, 120 stroke 14, 15. That's the meeting held on the 9th of October and that's been circulated uh, to members on the 21st of October. As of now, the Secretariat has not received any proposals for amendments. So can I um, ask if members would like to move amendments uh, here and now? If not, then let's confirm the minutes. Next, information papers issued since the last meeting. We have received a letter respectively from Mr. Charles Mock and Dr. Kenneth Chen and uh, they have suggested that certain items be included on the list of outstanding items for discussion. So that will be done and let's see when we can discuss those issues. Mr. Charles Peter Mock, anything to add? Yes, Chairman. If, um, you are prepared to include that on the list. Uh, I have nothing further to add because we have um, some recent arrests and in relation to the uh, dishonest use of um, computer with mens rea, I think there have been many public concerns and also in 1992-93 when the uh, legislation was first enacted, I think there's been some change uh, with the lapse of time. So I'd like to uh, find out the latest position. Yes. We will also be discussing um, the issues to be discussed at the next meeting under the next uh, item. The administration has proposed uh, two items for discussion at the next meeting. It's about the any report uh, to be submitted uh, by the Commissioner on Interception of Communications and Surveillance and also um, contingency plan with regard to uh, nuclear incidents near Hong Kong. So uh, we will be discussing the contingency plan. So the administration has proposed uh, that these two items be discussed at the next meeting. And uh, the list of outstanding items for discussion is contained in CB bracket 2, 189 bracket 01. And just now, uh, in fact, uh, Dr. Kenneth Chen's uh, item has been included on that list already, and I've been um, telling the officials that I would like to arrange for a discussion on the use of military sites as soon as possible. All right. Anything else on the list of outstanding items that you'd like to discuss as soon as possible? If not, then that will be the arrangement. And uh, at our December meeting, we'll be discussing the two items that I just uh, read out. Item 4. Well, on the 27th of October, we had a special meeting, and uh, this is um, a matter arising from that special meeting. So there are two motions that we have to deal with right now. So we have to deal with um, a motion proposed by Mr. Chung Kok Pan. Mr. Chung Kok Pan, um, Chairman, I'd like to propose the following motion. The occupation movement or the Occupy movement has been uh, in place for more than a month and uh, there has been significant impact affecting uh, commuters, students uh, going to and from work and uh, school and business operators have also been affected and uh, even emergency rescue operations will also be affected and uh, there have been tremendous difficulties and uh, some protesters have also charged at uh, police uh, cordon line um, and some innocent residents have also been Sorted, and the uh, and the situation in Mongkok is uh, on the on the verge of uh, social disorder, and some 
residents' uh, physical or personal safety would also be uh, at risk. And therefore, there have been challenges and uh, provocations, and the police are, are subjected uh, to severe pressure. They, and they have adopted a fair and impartial and professional attitude in enforcing and discharging their duties. And uh, we'd like to uh, support the police uh, for. Uh, discharging and enforce discharging the duties and enforcing the law fairly and impartially, and um, the frontline police officers should not be uh, taken as um, uh, sh should not be used uh, for the venting of anger, and uh, we should also urge the administration to offer more assistance to frontline police officers so that uh, they will be able to enforce the law fairly and um, impartially, and they will be able to uphold uh, the rule of law. And we would also like to call upon the protesters uh, to end their uh, public assembly as soon as possible. They should retreat uh, from the roads uh, in order to rebuild uh, social order in Hong Kong. So will those in favor please raise their hands? Can we speak on the motion? I think last time we have already had a discussion uh, on that. So will those in support please raise their hands? Secretary, please count the uh, number. Um, someone claims a division. All right, please raise your hands again, and the secretary will count the number. So after your name has been read out, uh, you can uh, put down your hand. Ng Lang Sheng, Priscilla Leung, Michael Tian, uh, Felix Chong, Elizabeth Guot, uh, Anne Chiang, Yu Si Wing, Chen Kem Lam, Christopher Jiang, uh, Chen Kin Po, Wong Kwok Kin, Leung Chi Cheng, and Ma Fung Kwok. Those who are against, please raise your hands. Kenneth Chen, Emily Lau, Fernando Zhang, Charles Peter Bock, Raymond Wong. The result of the voting, 13 for, 5 against. The motion is carried. Next, uh, Mr. Michael Tian, you may now move your motion. Thank you, Chairman. The OCM has lasted for more than a month, and originally, uh, residents of Hong Kong have taken the police as their pride, and now the conflict between the police and the residents uh, has deepened, and, uh, and uh, such conflicts are, uh, are increasing in frequency and uh, severity. And uh, it's been known that uh, many office, public, uh, police officers on duty have been subjected uh, to huge pressure and they have to lock, work long hours in, and they have been subjected uh, to a lot of provocation and uh, criticisms. And even their family members have also been affected. And some have even received uh, threatening messages and uh, their social networking um, but pages and also um, mobile phone numbers have also been disclosed and therefore we'd like to urge the administration number one to take concrete action to face up to the uh, psychological pressure faced uh, by police officers and second measures should be adopted uh, to support frontline police officers including uh, counseling. Will those in favor please raise their hands. We will um, jot down the names. Those in favor please raise their hands. Ng Lang Sheng, Priscilla Leung, Felix Chong, Michael Tian, Elizabeth Quart, and Chiang, Yu Si Wing, Chen Kem Lam, Ma Fong Kwok, Leung Chi Cheng, Wong Kwok Kin, Chen Kin Po, and Christopher Chong, Jiang. Those against, please raise their hands. Raymond Chen, Charles Peter Mock, Kenneth Chen, Emily Lau, Fernando Jiang, James To, Raymond Wong, The result is 13 for 7 against. Uh, the motion is carried. Okay, so much for matters arising. We are now on item 5. 
proposed extension for three years of a supernumerary administrative officer staff grade C post in the Narcotics Division of the Security Bureau. Let's invite the administration team to join us. With us today, from the administration, are Mrs. Erica Hoy, Commissioner for Narcotics, and Ms. Mandy Wong, Principal Assistant Secretary for Security Narcotics Two. I welcome to the two officials. Yes, Mrs. Hoy, would you like to walk us through the paper? Well, um, Chairman, please allow me to. Uh, do a brief uh, presentation. Chairman, members, I'm very pleased today to come with my colleagues to brief you on our paper. That's a proposal for a three-year extension of a supernumerary post of AOSGC in the Narcotics Division. And uh, our responsibility is to come up with anti-drug policies and measures across the public sector, non-government organizations, and the community with regard to anti-money money laundering and counter-financing of terrorism. We have also uh, we are also responsible for formulating policies and the and the or and. And the Narcotics uh, Division has two AOSGC supporting the work of the C4N, and uh, they are uh, PASN1 and N2. And uh, PASN1 is a permanent post, while PASN2 was first created in February 2010, and the post um, is now a two-year supernumerary post. Um, and uh, it was um, it came into effect on in G February 26, 2013, and will expire on the 16th of February 2015. With regard to anti-drug work, yes, there has been some encouraging progress in the past few years, but then there have been some new challenges, including the fact uh, that uh, drug abuse has become more hidden, and uh, the culture is become more prevalent, and also um, the number of uh, drug abusers. Uh, has also increased, and as a result, uh, more drug abusers would also uh, be suffering from irreversible or serious uh, signs of deterioration. And also, in a particular group, in particular, for the working young adults, um, the uh, ratio of drug abusers has also increased. As a result, in terms of our strategy, we also have to be more focused um, in our intervention. And in terms of uh, um, drug uh, treatment and rehabilitation, that's a very important part of our anti-drug efforts. And uh, while drug abuse uh, is becoming a more sophisticated problem, in order to be effective in tackling the problem, we have to uh, increase or enhance uh, cross-sectoral uh, collaboration, and we will have to provide more assistance to these uh, drug abusers and, uh, the, and PASN2. We'll have to look at uh, the different uh, kinds of uh, community-based um, uh, drug treatment services so that uh, there can be more co collaboration between the different sectors. And uh, the following would be the highlights of uh, his or her work. First, uh, he will have to promote uh, the uh, integration of uh, services provided by different sectors. These include um, uh, drug treatment uh, premises and also counseling centers and also uh, treatment centers so that there can be better collaboration and um, uh, that would all, uh, so that uh, the drug abusers will receive more effective services. And we will also have to encourage the sectors to <coughs> deepen uh, their services. For example, in terms of education, uh, vocational training, and employment needs will have to be taken care of in order to ensure that after they have uh, completed their treatment, uh, their uh, uh, relapse rate can be reduced. And uh, this PASN2 is also responsible for formulating plans uh, for residential care service so that uh, there can be in situ improvement works or to identify sites uh, for relocation in order to meet the licensing requirements for residential treatment services. That's a very important part of um, our efforts. We have got uh, 39 such centres and 15 have yet uh, to uh, complete the licensing procedures. And in the next uh, three years, what we are aware of are uh, at least three will have to undergo certain improvement uh, 
projects or works. We continue to work with these institutions of Pekin. They can achieve the licensing uh, requirements. And lastly, I'd like to talk about our policy on drug testing. Uh, first, uh, we're promoting uh, this uh, school, healthy school campus uh, to healthy school program to our schools so as to enhance students' awareness and, uh, and ability to risk drugs. And uh, the um, officer will also have to uh, see whether drug testing can be an additional measure to help us to uh, identify uh, drug addicts earlier so as to give them timely assistance. Uh, as I said, uh, details of the drug testing program uh, involves uh, formulating a concrete plan for the second stage consultation. And uh, this is just uh, part of uh, the uh, many duties of uh, PASN2 uh, to deal with this very uh, hidden nature of drug addicts. Well, uh, this is important because uh, Drug addiction is more and more a hidden problem and are faced with new challenges in um, new trends in uh, drug taking. Uh, we have to continue to uh, extend the um, term for another three years so as uh, to carry out the uh, plans set out in our paper. We very much hope to have your support so that we can submit a paper to the ESC and FC for funding. I'm happy to take questions from members. Thank you. Uh, members, uh, questions and comments. I've got Mr. Wong Yokman, Dr. Anjang. Mr. Raymond Chen, Mr. Chen Kim Po, Mr. Frankie uh, Yu, Mr. Uh, Fernando Zhang, and Mr. Kenneth Leung, and Mr. Elizabeth Quat. Uh, four minutes each, okay? Four minutes each. Mr. Wong Yukman. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, even though uh, the Pan Democrats are not going to uh, launch a non cooperation campaign, I won't support you. Now, this uh, AOSGC is, in fact, a um, supernumerary post starting f on the 13th of February uh, to uh, 2010. It was made a permanent post. And as for um, PSN2, uh, it was first established in February 2010, and then it was extended for another two years from February 2013 to 2015 February. Now you propose to extend it for another three years. This is in fact a trap, uh, Chairman. I don't know what you, whether you understand what is meant by a trap. They're using these justifications to turn a supernumerary post to a permanent post and another supernumerary post uh, for eight years. In 2009, uh, when the two posts were first created, didn't you know that you need the support of uh, PSN1 and PSN2? No, because uh, you want to get uh, the um, panel's support. You did it bit by bit. This is uh, rather uh, dishonorable. It was a trap set out for us. I think you should review the work of the um, Narcotics Bureau. Narcotics Division, and then uh, streamline its establishment. You cannot resolve this problem by extending the post for three years and then another three years. I have the impression that the Narcotics Division is finding uh, work so as to justify the uh, PSN2, for instance, uh, the Typo uh, Campus uh, Drug Testing Program, as we all know, it was not really effective. After a review, it was not extended to other districts. If it was effective, it would not be confined to Typo alone. And you rely on uh, information from the Central Registry of Drug Abuse. No matter how effective uh, your anti-narcotic work is, drug addiction is still a very hidden problem. As a result, you can't really know the full picture. You rely, you talk about uh, the uh, rising uh, 
the the increase in uh, age of uh, first time uh, drug addicts reported to the CRDA. Well, what about those not newly reported abusers? Those not reported to you, of course, had a longer duration of addiction, and it's also mentioned that uh, it has to help uh, SADA uh, and also other institutions to fulfill the licensing conditions. And uh, since 2010, seven uh, DTRCs have successfully acquired licenses and and you have uh, 24 licensed uh, such centers among the 39 in total. I think this is a matter of policy. Implementation of a policy doesn't need a uh, directorate grade officer. Uh, frontline uh, drug, uh, you attack drug and um, to um, crack down a source, you rely on enforcement. The ESC is now under the control of pan Democrats. Of course, you will get the support of this panel, but it will still be useless. By the time you reach ESC, uh, your paper will still be vetoed. So I think you should take the uh, remaining few months to reorganize your work and streamline your manpower. I think this is the realistic way, realistic thing to do. Dr. Enjang, thank you. According to the administration, uh, the oh. Outcome of your work is rather encouraging, and yet we're told that we have got an increasing uh, larger population of drug addicts. So it is not really too effective. While you tell us uh, you are going to adopt a focused approach, can you tell us uh, how focused it will be? And according to uh, Mr. Wong, the establishment subcommittee uh, may still veto your paper and you cannot uh, create this post. That being the case, how are you going to deal with the problem? Will we see a rising number of drug abusers as a result? Ms. Hoi, uh, Dr. Jiang, talk about the number of abusers in Hong Kong in the past few years. Uh, the number of drug abusers uh, reported uh, has uh, shown some improvements. Uh, from 2008 to 2013, the percentage drop was uh, over 20 percent. And then for young drug abusers, uh, we have done a lot of work, and therefore those that are below 11 years old, the uh, four was more market marked. It was uh, over 60 percent. So you can see that uh, what we've done uh, has borne fruits. But because uh, the trend is always changing, uh, for instance, uh, psychotropic drugs are now more popular. And uh, the uh, mode of addiction is simpler, and uh, there is no very obvious withdrawal symptoms, and therefore uh, the uh, abusers might only be uh, identified after a long time. So uh, even for newly reported cases, uh, they have uh, started to show physical uh, problems. Damage to their health is also significant. Therefore, well, we have a five-pronged approach, including prevention and publicity, uh, enforcement and rehabilitation, so and so forth. We're faced with new uh, trends in drug addiction. We have uh, to uh, adopt a multi-pronged approach, and uh, this P A N C P A S N two. Well, uh, 
coordinate the work of uh, residential treatment centers. In the past, it was easier uh, for uh, drug addicts to kick the habits, but now we need medical input to help them to deal with their physical uh, symptoms. Now, for residential uh, treatment centers and community treatment centers that provide counseling, uh, there must be better coordination of their services so as to make them more effective. Uh, because of a discussion among uh, different uh, sectors, we would like to intensify our work so that the effect of our rehabilitation can be more sustained, and that will be done uh, by means of uh, education and uh, employment uh, services. I hope that uh, members and officials can uh, be more succinct. There is still a question from uh, Dr. Chang unanswered, but I must uh, stick to our time limit. Mr. Raymond Chen, thank you, Chairman. Regarding this supernumerary post, as we all know, it has to uh, continue uh, to um, to uh, to uh, deal with the second uh, stage of drug testing. As we all know, uh, there was a prior consultation, and the response was half half in terms of uh, support and objection. But then uh, they did another round of questionnaire survey. I really said that it was not too good. Why don't you uh, launch uh, a signature campaign? You can get millions of uh, signature to support you. And according to the survey, in general, the community supported further measures. That is open to interpretation. Uh, is this a compulsory um, uh, drug testing in the community? Now, if you are going to f impose this on society and uh, by means of uh, extending this post, we oppose that. Regardless of whether there is any non-cooperation campaign, the ESC will certainly oppose this paper because there is no consensus in the community yet and there is no reason why we should give you money to uh, implement this uh, this scheme. Well, according to Ms. Hoy, it was only part of the duties of uh, this post, assuming that uh, the scheme is not introduced, then what will happen? Well, you may say that uh, you maintain an open mind and uh, you may not uh, impose a scheme at all, because both the Medical Council and the Bar Association of the view that this program is a violation of human rights. Uh, why do you still want to uh, carry out a second stage public consultation? Uh, when, when, when are you going to make a decision? Uh, regarding uh, this program, as I said, this is just uh, one of the uh, many duties to be taken on this PSCN2, PSN2. In our last stage, last uh, round of public consultation, we do agree that drug addiction is a very hidden problem, and we all want to find new ways to identify drug abusers earlier. You, uh, there may be uh, views against uh, the implementation of the program, but I uh, believe uh, we should uh, have a second stage public consultation so that there can be various options. We have no intention uh, to force uh, to of force this program on the community because we've heard worries come from the community and I think uh, it is worthwhile to uh, carry out more studies. The PSN2 has maintained a very close liaison with the industry and at three, three years uh, we have a three-year plan 
on um, uh, drug treatment and rehabilitation services in Hong Kong. We have a lot of discussion uh, with uh, uh, social uh, welfare bodies. So when will you decide if you are going to implement it and would it affect this uh, post? Uh, well, we haven't got a specific uh, package for consultation. We are still considering it. Next, uh, UC Wing. All right, uh, the current situation is worsening at two levels. Number one, young dr drug abusers, and second, uh, uh, they are going underground. And uh, number one, you talk about young drug young drug abusers. Uh, the number is uh, growing. Well, from for those uh, from 21 to 35, uh, in fact, uh, that went up by 32 percent. And uh, well, either they have uh, uh, well, uh, either they have uh, just uh, joined the workforce or they are already at work. So how are you going to help these young drug abusers? Because they are somewhat different from the uh, high school kids because um, um, they are no longer at school and um, at uh, student uh, dorms. So what can you do about this? And also when people go underground, all right, uh, they would join uh, rave parties and so on. And uh, in some cases, uh, the abusers have been uh, abusing drugs for several years without their family knowing. So at the um, uh, distribution uh, outlet, uh, you will have to tackle the problem. All right, there are so many people selling drugs and uh, the way and means of um, uh, drug selling would also be somewhat different. So how are you going to identify these uh, hidden youth? And also, how are you going to help the parents in identifying their kids uh, who are abusing drugs? Um, Commissioner, well, for the young drug abusers, the situation is getting worse. Um, well, in fact, uh, during the past uh, years and months, we have been working very hard to go into schools uh, to do preventive work in identifying youth below 21 who are abusing drugs. And uh, in this respect, actually, the progress has been good. That's why for those uh, under 21, in terms of, of the uh, population, is already shrinking and uh, the uh, rate of reduction is Rather significant, but then for those um, over for those uh, from 21 to 30, many of them started uh, before 21, and uh, they've only been identified uh, afterwards. And according to the uh, treatment centre's uh, response, some of them, uh, as they have already joined the workforce, they have already graduated, and uh, as they have only uh, got addicted uh, after joining the workforce. So we are now looking at the problem with different sectors because many of them are already school leavers and that's why we have to adopt different approaches in our intervention and also we will also be uh, looking at our next uh, three-year plan to see what we can do for the age group uh, from 21 to 30. With regard to going underground, as Mr. Chen just said, it's not just about uh, identifying them. In fact, uh, there are several respects uh, where we have already strengthened our work. In terms of publicity and education, we are already attaching a lot of importance. We do encourage those with uh, drug abuse problems to come forward to seek help. And uh, that would also uh, mean that we have, to, we have beefed up our hotline service and uh, we have seen some um, results already. And also family education is also very important. That's why during the last few years we have uh, strengthened our collaboration with the districts. We have stepped up publicity so that uh, in terms of parenting and family members' uh, awareness of the drug problem so that uh, parents would be able to um, um, uh, be aware of um, uh, their kids' uh, behavior so that if anything goes wrong, then they would be able to identify it um, early. And also between 2011 and 13, the police have also put in a lot of efforts uh, in combating drug problems. Uh, some $2.4 billion worth of uh, drugs have been seized, uh, so we have never spared our efforts at all. You see Wing and then uh, Fernando Zhang. Chairman, as the Commissioner said, uh, the drug problem is getting more complicated and the uh, implications are getting more far-reaching. And uh, in more recently, many of the more serious uh, uh, crime cases have to do with drug abuse. So I think uh, they are bringing about more problems. And in terms of this supernumerary post, uh, I believe that it should be extended. But then if you look at the content of this paper, much of it uh, would not 
be uh, temporary in nature, uh, uh, including the promotion of policies and also providing assistance to drug treatment centers. And if they want to apply for a license, so there may be more uh, DTRCs uh, applying for license. So they w such um, work would not end after three years. So why don't you consider this? Mr. Raymond Wong might be a little radical in his views, but then there are certain points that should be considered. You should revamp your work so that it should be t um, it should be turned to regular regular work. And Ms. Uh, N. Chiang also asked a question with regard to the uh, ESC. If you look at the setup now, the Pan Democrats would be finding different excuses uh, for not extending this post. Under the circumstances, what are you going to do? Commissioner, thank you, Chairman. Concerning the point made by Mr. Yu about revamping our service, in fact, during the past few years, we've been reviewing the need for this post. Uh, in fact, for the two PAS uh, posts, if you look at their duties, part of them um, might have room for adjustment in the next few years after certain tasks. Are completed, and um, as uh, a responsible administrator, we are now putting some duties uh, on the two PAS posts. But then, for the more short-term initiatives, after they have been completed, for example, for another PAS, what well, with regard to the um, to the uh, special financial task force, uh, well, the work would be completing shortly. And also for the community drug testing program, that is the rescue drug testing scheme. And also, after we have uh, assisted uh, most of the DTRCs in applying for a license, the pressure um, would be reduced. And uh, by then, we would be in a position to review whether or not uh, we can revamp the post. And by then, we will consider what the uh, prevailing drug situation is like. So we will work hard uh, to follow up on this. With regard to um, the support or otherwise from the ESC, we believe that um, in the Hong Kong community, including lawmakers in this council, whatever your views might be on the work of the ND, you may not be 100% in support of what we have been doing. We believe that majority of the Hong Kong public attach importance to the work in fighting drug abuse because that would affect uh, our future tremendously, in particular for the drug abuse uh, population. Many of them are young people, and uh, the impact on our community would be significant. That's why, precisely because we understand this and uh, we also understand that we have to be very careful with regard to whatever proposal we present with this council. We are now um, trying our very best uh, because we can see that the situation is serious. All right, before you go to the ESC, please uh, come up with a more detailed analysis so that uh, we will know the pros and cons of uh, uh, approving this post or not. Dr. Fernando Zhang, thank you, Chairman. I'm against uh, this proposal to extend this supernumerary post. The reason is that if you look at the work of um, uh, uh, fighting drug abuse, uh, I think we have um, gone down the wrong direction. All right, uh, Donald Zhang said that uh, we would have to start with the rescue drug testing scheme, and uh, all of a sudden, uh, we've been told that uh, it's almost like uh, a drug prevalent community, and therefore we have to go into the school campus in order to test uh, drug abuse. But then, after all the efforts, uh, you haven't been able to identify a single kid who's abusing drugs. So I think you've damaged the relationship between students and uh, schools, and uh, students and teachers, and also social workers and students. The trust has been completely undermined and after a lot of money has been spent, it's not yielding any fruit at all. And now, during the first uh, consultation, during the first uh, state of consultation on the rescue drug testing scheme, um, nothing has come about. And for the social workers who are more familiar with this problem, the more they know about the problem, the more they're against it. It's not just about uh, human rights. You're actually uh, 
uh, treating them as if they were criminals, and you're actually smearing them, and that's simply the wrong approach uh, in tackling the drug problem. So if you look at the whole situation after the consultation, all right, uh, you don't really like the opposition voices. That's why you conducted another opinion poll. And then out of the 1,000 respondents, half of them actually have never heard about this uh, rescue drug testing scheme. And you said that 90% uh, of them were in support. So this kind of opinion poll is just uh, used uh, to justify what you try to do. And you've already got preconceived idea about this. And now you say that uh, many DTRCs, in particular the residential care centers, uh, well, they have not been able to meet uh, the licensing requirements. That's not their problem at all because they don't have land. They have not been able to identify sufficient uh, land and uh, resources to do their work. And even if you put in more resources to create such posts, I think uh, the money should go directly to these centers to help them. And also in paragraph 18 of your paper, you said that you managed to uh, identify some 300 sites for them for the relocation and reprovisioning of such treatment centers. Only in one case was it successful. So out of the 300 sites that were identified, only one was successful. So even if I extend the case, uh, even if you were able to identify 600 cases, you would only be able to identify one more site for their use. So you've met with very strong opposition from the local residents. So what else can you do? So I'd like to put this to the uh, pro-establishment camp. At the district level, were you uh, one of the forces uh, behind behind the obstruction. So uh, the two of you should talk to one another and then you should work it out. So one is the government and the other is the pro-establishment camp. How come we have met with such opposition forces in the community? So out of these 300 sites, how come the opposition is so strong that even if the administration has tried very hard uh, to establish this uh, drug treatment center, it's uh, a very necessary so social or community service. So how come it has not been achieved? Chairman, well, Dr. Fernando Zhang raised a number of issues. I'll attempt to answer um, as the best I can. With regard to the direction, I think there has been a comprehensive review during the past few years concerning uh, what we should be doing in fighting drug abuse. With regard to drug testing, well, for the Healthy School uh, campaign, well, from the very beginning, the intention has never been to identify the students for punishment. So that's the Healthy School Program. This is a preventive education work. We hope that uh, we can go into the campus so that uh, we can strengthen the determination on the part of um, students to fight drugs so that we can build a drug-free culture. We've been working with schools, teachers and parents. We have conducted a um, questionnaire survey and in fact 100% of the school headmasters recognize that uh, that would also help in building a drug-free culture. And among students and teachers, the response has been very good. Dr. Kenneth Chen and then Elizabeth Quart. Chairman, I hope that uh, we would not just be supporting the creation of this post or extension of a post uh, for three years without good reasons. In, in fact, uh, starting from 2010, there's been an extension and now they're coming for another extension and it's three years after three years and they're telling us that there is a three-year program. That's why we need to continue with this post uh, for another three years. And uh, what's needed to be done is that uh, we have to review well, since the establishment of this uh, post, whether or not it, uh, the uh, post holder has done his or her job, and also for the rescue drug testing scheme, that's the second stage of uh, public engagement, you will need to keep this post uh, in order to uh, further the work, and that would be needed for another three years. I think uh, an important question. I believe that uh, everybody throughout the territory would not say that we don't need to deal with the drug abuse problem. I don't believe anyone would say no to having a government policy to deal with this, but then whether or not we have done a good job and whether or not we need this uh, three-year supernumerary post to just uh, uh, do these uh, tasks. So we don't want to give people this impression because uh, my subjective perception is that uh, you're suggesting that uh, you've been doing a remarkable job during the past few years. That's why you're using the same excuses and say that uh, you have to work harder for the next uh, few years and therefore you need this post uh, for another three years. And if uh, there are some initiatives that have to be continued and if you have to um, uh, review the uh, functions of the post, 
to find out uh, whether or not there needs to be adjustments in the structure and in the framework. And if you did that, and therefore you needed uh, a permanent post, uh, then that might be justified instead of uh, so that you, you don't need uh, a supernumerary post because the FS says that uh, you will have to cut your budget and you will have to submit 1% of your budget. Uh, so uh, even for the uh, fundamental review, you are not willing to do it. According to um, Ms. Hoi, after these three years, there will be another review, and perhaps you can uh, dispense with uh, one of the PAS posts. That being the case, why don't you do the review earlier? It may be easier for you to come back to get our consent. So at this stage, we can't support your application. In this panel, well, uh, because there are more pro-establishment members, uh, you may get the support of the panel. But uh, at ESC, I hope the uh, commissioner can discuss with us in greater details to see whether uh, in your mechanism and establishment there are sufficient justifications to extend this supernumerary post for another three years. Just so to complete uh, work not yet done in the first five years, and also to uh, carry out the second stage public consultation of the RDT. Now, if uh, it is one of the major duties of the uh, PASN2, then it is not really, really necessary to keep it. I hope that more information can be given to us. And uh, at ESC and FC, you must tell us more clearly the direction whether you really need the post for another three years or can you uh, reorganize uh, the work in your uh, uh, division. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, we did a review of the work of the two PSNs uh, before we submitted the paper. They uh, have uh, their very heavy uh, workload and therefore here we propose to extend uh, the uh, PSN2 for another three years. Uh, regarding the second stage public consultation of our D2, it is uh, the uh, many um, things we have to do. It's just one of the very many things we have to do on our policies on uh, drug testing. Uh, Ms. Elizabeth Quart, I think uh, this is also a subject very close to the heart of parents. We want to uh, fight uh, drugs, and we are for uh, extending this post. As uh, the uh, drug addiction uh, trend evolves, it is important that we have someone with experience. This uh, incumbent uh, officer has followed through the development uh, in the past few years, and it is important that the post has continuity, and uh, the post has also uh, been effective. Given the uh, challenges we face in uh, drug prevention and rehabilitation and treatment, it is important that the post uh, can be extended. Some members said they are against uh, RDT and therefore they are against the extension of the post. Yes, RDT is controversial. There are people, there are both people for and against the scheme. If uh, by uh, if in stopping uh, this uh, post. Uh, RDT cannot continue, then some people may think that it is not fair. I'd like to ask Ms. Hoi uh, what will be the impact on our drug uh, prevention work if the post cannot be extended? Ms. Hoi. Uh, in drug treatment and rehabilitation, we have a lot of uh, cross-sector collaboration with the education, medical, and uh, social welfare sectors, for instance. In the past few years, we have uh, engaged in a dialogue with colleagues from different sectors, and uh, we've come up uh, with uh, some idea 
and uh, this can be reflected in uh, the three-year plan on drug treatment and rehabilitation services in Hong Kong. We are now uh, carrying out the consultation work for the three-year covering 2015 to 2017. And uh, we have to adjust our uh, three-year plan in the light of uh, what's happening currently. Uh, we have to understand uh, the uh, real situation from uh, different sectors in the past. Uh, we haven't done a very good job. That's before the creation of the PASN2 post. With the post, I believe we can do much better. I hope that we can uh, allow the post to continue so that we can continue with our liaison work. Because if the post is not extended, uh, there can't be any collaboration, or coordination, and follow up. Because it is important that we have continuity. We need manpower uh, to discuss and uh, to. Uh, engage uh, the other uh, sectors in a dialogue. Mr. Leung Kwok Hong. Ms. Elizabeth Kwok said that uh, we uh, were bullies. In fact, uh, how can we be that? They want us to return a rose to uh, the uh, to 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 the community. Well, Hong Kong is so big. We've only occupied a few roads. Uh, you want us to return the roads to you. In fact, uh, you've already occupied the whole of Hong Kong. All right. After digressed. This post uh, was n not formally in existence. You uh, now, if you build more treatment centers for rehabilitation, I want more posts. And then uh, you would like to carry out a stage two public consultation on RD2. Now, you have the view that drug abusers have to be identified. Let me tell you, it is easy to identify them in schools. You can ask me, I, uh, well, those who uh, urinate frequently and uh, who uh, seem rather drowsy are drug abusers. I think even teachers know it's just that schools uh, don't want to be labeled and they don't report drug abusers to you. You can just tell principals that uh, with one uh, student reported a school can have an extra $10,000. I'm sure they will report students to you. The problem is schools don't want to be labeled and therefore they will not uh, turn uh, their students to you. And for RDT, uh, I think you can only draw a reference from Sweden. PASN1 uh, is responsible uh, for taking forward the rec implementations of the recommendations of the Financial Action Task Force. I don't mind. I think you should strengthen the work of PSN2. You should target the problem as source. I think society is hypocritical. Uh, the community of parents don't want to uh, turn uh, their children up. Now, uh, and I, I've, I've known a case uh, who uh, could not be admitted into a treatment center, although uh, he was identified for nine months. Now, if you are serious, you should not carry out any RDT public consultation. You should build more treatment and rehabilitation centers so that those who are willing can be treated there. You don't have enough places in our and uh, DTLCs. So what's the point of uh, creating more demand? You do not give enough resources for NGOs to provide treatment services, and yet you identified more drug abusers to demand the service. Do you understand? You do. You 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 haven't addressed the problem at source or downstream. Uh, Donald Zhang had nothing to do, and uh, he uh, launched uh, 
program on uh, idling um, engines. No, I won't support you. If you strengthen uh, PASN1, fine. If you provide more support to DTLC, is good. I think you know the problem well. Now, I know this problem well because uh, those uh, street, street sleepers, uh, um, football players uh, had uh, drug addiction history, many of them. I know the problem well. You can treat me to tea, I can tell you. Miss Emily Lau. Well, many members have spoken of the view that the current arrangement is problematic. So can you really resolve the problem by extending the post for three years? Now, according to the paper, uh, you say sometimes that the situation has improved and uh, in uh, other um, places you said that uh, the history of drug abuse has increased from 1.9 years uh, to 4.6 years. And uh, for the young adults uh, aged between 21 and 30, the percentage has increased from 32% to 40%. And uh, those who are in the uh, workforce are also drug abusers. So uh, you seem helpless faced with this problem. And identifying places for DTLCs, uh, this is worrying. Only one out of 300 possible sites uh, was successful. Can you tell us uh, what are the problematic districts where you have encountered a lot of opposition? How come you can only identify one out of 300 sites? for uh, relocating a DTLC. Can you tell us why is it so difficult? Ms. Hoy? Yes, uh, the drug problem is changing. As we said, uh, things are improving. The total number of drug abusers has dropped. It's just that we have uh, spotted uh, some uh, changes in the trend and we must uh, respond in a strategic manner. For newly reported cases recently, uh, the uh, drug history uh, has uh, been longer and there are people with uh, serious uh, physical problems and therefore we are proposing recommendations to identify drug abusers earlier so that we can intervene earlier. As for helping detail C's to identify sites for relocation, the problems are um, multifaceted. For instance, we might have uh, vacated school premises, but the locations uh, may not be uh, right. Some of them are dilapidated, some are too remote, and uh, in some uh, districts they do not welcome such facilities. However, we are working very hard. And uh, we have made some uh, headway in the past few years. I'd like to take this opportunity to uh, talk about our DTLCs. We have increased substantial resources to organizations uh, providing residential or community uh, counseling treatment services. Depending on uh, the state, uh, drug abusers need different facilities. Oh, you can talk about the uh, facilities later. I'm talking about the DTLCs. You told us that you had only uh, success in one site out of 300. I'd like to know how many more feasible sites do you have to explore before you can get some uh, success? Among 39 DTLCs, 15 have uh, yet to obtain license, and we're helping them to satisfy the licensing conditions. Some uh, will see their facilities upgraded and improved in situ, and some uh, may be relocated to new places. So how many of them need uh, new locations? Nine. Nine. Okay, you have explored 300 feasible sites and you've only got uh, uh, one success. And well, we are now looking at three to four sites, but we need to study the feasibility. Mr. Lam Tai Fai, uh, fighting a drug is a long term work and is also indispensable. It is not an easy task. And if you are complacent in the process, then drug dealers uh, will abuse the loopholes. 
when there are more drug abusers, society will suffer as a whole. So the government must spare no efforts in crime in uh, drug in beating drugs. I think the government has done a rather good job, and according to statistics, the uh, number of drug abusers has dropped recently. Uh, we have seen a sharp drop in uh, the age bracket, uh, 20 to 30. And if you do not continue with such initiatives, as I said, uh, the uh, drug traffickers uh, will take advantage of that uh, because there are different reasons for drug abuse, uh, including um, EC to buy and also peer pressure and even uh, social grievance. Uh, gap between the rich and the poor and also the difficulty in climbing the social ladder and so on and so forth. So all these might have uh, resulted in the youth uh, trying to um, main themselves uh, with drugs. Of course, uh, these are the wrong approaches or wrong medicine for the symptoms. But then for the post, uh, well, it started uh, in February 2012, and then uh, subsequently it expired, and then in 2012 it's going to expire again, and you are now trying to extend it further. As I just said, is it necessary for this post to be extended time and again? And if this task uh, is needed on a long-term basis, should you make it permanent instead of just uh, extending it time and again? Because why don't you just uh, regularize it? Because in any case, uh, such initiatives will have to be continued, unless you say that in a few years' time the zero will, will drop to the, the figure will drop to zero. So should you turn it into a permanent post? Just now you said that you were glad that the figures have dropped, but then as we know, there are more people who have become hidden drug abusers, and in fact. Uh, they would um, hide in places where you are not able to uncover. So the population might be very big. So how are you going to step up your efforts in identifying the hidden drug abusers in order to help them kick the habit? So can you give us some advice? Just now, we were told that out of the several hundred uh, uh, sites identified, you only managed to get one to be used. Uh, why? Is it because people were not willing to cooperate or what? So can you give us more information? Commissioner, just uh, a few quick points as to whether or not uh, the post should be made permanent. As we said, during the past few years, um, one of the PAS posts uh, has been made permanent. And after reviewing the uh, work of the two posts, uh, we believe that uh, some of them could be completed uh, within a fixed term. These would include uh, the anti-drug laundering, so the legislative uh, work should be completed shortly. That's why after the fixed term work has uh, been completed, uh, we believe that there is room for us to uh, review the situation to see if this post uh, should be made permanent. With regard to uh, hidden uh, drug abuse, uh, we have been doing a lot of work. Number one, we would like to identify them as early as possible. Second, as has been said, all right, uh, we, uh, some suggested that uh, we are demonizing the drug abusers. No, that's not true. In fact, our attitude is that we'd like to encourage them to uh, seek help because we are very caring for them. With regard to identifying sites for the uh, reprovisioning of the uh, services, well, some of these sites are pretty uh, remote, and that's why it's inaccessible. And some, is on the, some would be on a slope, and some would be... Um, inadequate because of the lack of facilities. For example, the size might be too small. Priscilla Leung, thank you, Chairman. Well, whatever we think is not right, uh, we should make it clear. Drug abuse is not good, not just uh, to, the in, to the individuals, but also to their families and the entire community. So we should not be sidetracked. We should not be accused of demonizing them. In fact, we are trying to reach out to help them. And if you look at uh, para 12 and 14, there are some figures. And obviously, for the young people during the past few years, because the entire community care for them, you can see that, uh, well, the figures have come down. But then in para 14, it's about uh, those who are at full-time or part-time work, those from 21 to 30. In fact, there is a rising trend. Well, for young people, well, um, 
we have uh, teenagers uh, coming on stream year after year. That's why you will have to reach out to them to ensure that uh, they would not be harmed by drugs or they can also kick the habits. So I think that's um, a sustained effort. But then what, I, what you're saying in para 14 is that we might have ignored this group of people and they are now um, adults. So in a community, how are we able to help them? Because honestly, during the past few years, I've also come across such uh, people. Some of them have completed master degree programs and they have no jobs. So if you talk about the symptoms, yes, uh, they might have been abusing drugs without our knowing. Okay, so with this uh, pose, uh, are you going to continue with uh, previous tasks? So will we be setting up task force? Because what you're trying to do is that uh, you will be targeting the uh, teenagers and also the young adults. So for these young adults, uh, what are you going to do to step up your efforts in helping them? Thank you. Well, the question shows that uh, during the past uh, few years in terms of uh, education and treatment, we have yielded some results. That's why at this juncture, it's time for us to take a second look as to how we can be more focused uh, in helping this group of uh, young people. In the paper, we have said that because uh, there is an overall drop in the population, that's why if you look at the group from 21 to 30, the drop rate is uh, less significant. That's why the number might um, have looked uh, to have increased, but then uh, uh, it's somewhat different from what we've been doing at schools. That's why we believe that uh, for this group of teenagers or young young adults, we will have to um, adopt a different approach. In fact, uh, within the sector, because of our past efforts, uh, we come to realize that uh, well, there might be a, a lack of motivation in seeking help and also their self-esteem might be very low and very often as we might have found well family uh, encouragement might be lacking so with more family encouragement uh, they would be more motiv motivated uh, to kick the habits and uh, uh, start a new life so after the efforts in the past few years, we noticed that uh, there are several areas that we can focus our efforts on in the next uh, few years. For example, we've been working with voluntary agencies to encourage them to move along that direction. Other than encouraging the drug abusers to uh, kick their habits, we also have to help their families to understand the problem and how they can help their family members in dealing with the drug abuse problem. And also for female drug abusers, some of them might become pregnant well, when they give birth or when they have family problems, or well, if we are able to provide more counseling to these women so that uh, we will be able to focus on their problems more, then the treatment uh, service will be more effective. All right, I think we have already spent more than an hour on this issue. Next, uh, uh, second round, and Chiang, one minute. I've noticed one thing. All right, with regard to the history of drug abuse, the longer it is, the more difficult it becomes in kicking the habit. I also noticed this figure. You have 2,200 newly reported uh, cases and over 50% were found uh, to have suffered from um, drug-induced uh, psychosis. So out of the 2,200 plus new patients, did you find them out um, during the past few years or were they old cases? Well, these 2,200 uh, were identified by the HA between 2009 and 2013. They were new cases and uh, they were admitted uh, to the SACs and uh, most of them received um, um, psychiatric services. So these are the new cases of the HA and uh, many of them have abused drugs uh, for a long time and as a result uh, they might have suffered from drug induced uh, psychosis uh, because of brain, brain damage and also um, uh, they would also suffer from urinary problems so um, and also bladder problems so we would have we would like to identify them early in order to treat them uh, would they recover well, the simple answer is according to the doctors. Well, the longer they have been abusing drugs, uh, the uh, the uh, 
less chance that they have uh, in staging a full recovery. So if they can be identified early, then they stand a better chance of uh, having a full recovery. All right, from what's been said just now, I noticed that uh, some members uh, have reservation about this. Others are in support of the proposal. So I'm sure that will be recorded. So I'd like to ask if members agree in principle that uh, the administration should refer this item to the ESC. Can I have a show of hands? All right. That being the case, then we will say that uh, we endorse it in principle, and then the matter will be referred to the ESC for discussion. Sorry, speaker is not coming through. What well, Mr. Lang Kwok Hong talk about the DTRCs, whether or not the facilities are adequate. Well, from what we have seen in the DTRCs, the utilization rate is only up to 70%. In fact, uh, in the first half of 2014, some 90% of the drug abusers, well, so long as they uh, have indicated, then they will be admitted within two weeks. So in terms of the uh, service level, we believe that we are able to cope. All right, next item. I'd like to ask uh, the Deputy Chairman to chair the meeting on my behalf because uh, I'm otherwise engaged. All right, next item. Latest developments in the provision of rehabilitative services are by the CSD. Let's invite the officials to join us. I welcome to Ms. Bella Mui, Principal Assistant Secretary for Security, Mr. Wu Yingming, Assistant Commissioner for Correctional Services Rehabilitation, Mr. Chen Kin Chong, Senior Superintendent Rehabilitation from the CSD, and also Ms. Shirley Yong, Deputy Secretary for Security. So I welcome to the officials. And uh, the administration has already submitted the paper in paper CB bracket 2, 1189, stroke 14 to 15, bracket 05. So can I invite the administration uh, to brief us? Thank you, Chairman. We are here to brief members on the latest development in the provision of rehabilitative services to persons in custody by the CSD, including um, vocational training and also promotion and promotion of um, their work and also uh, rehabilitation. So the CSD is committed uh, to providing um, the rehabilitation services to them, and one of the uh, work is to uh, provide industries and industri and vocational training. And we've been working with driven sectors, for example, the BTC, the um, the CIC, so that uh, at different uh, institutions we provide more than 30 vocational training courses to the persons in custody. And we would also be monitoring the job vacancy situation in order to provide them with uh, job-related uh, training. For example, in 2013-14, um, we have got. Um, uh, bath bending fix and fixing skills, timber uh, formwork skills, digital images, uh, editing, travel uh, agent assistant training, and also professional taxi driver training course in order to en enable the um, uh, the, custod uh, the uh, persons in custody to sit in the uh, uh, taxi driving license written test in the penal institutions, and in order to and also we have encouraged employers to register as caring employers. And at the end of uh, September 2014, the CSD held a video conferencing job fair for rehabilitated persons jointly with the Chinese Manufacturers Association of Hong Kong and Merchant Supporter for Rehabilitated Vendors Committee Limited. Uh, so um, um, on the spot, uh, job interviews were conducted, and uh, 
some 400 persons have been promised the jobs by employers and over 300 employers have been registered as caring employers. With regard to education, we have also arranged for uh, qualified teachers to provide uh, uh, junior secondary to high school education and they've also been assisted in taking the DSE examination and this year 15 young persons in custody set for the HK DSE examination and uh, they took a total of 82 examination papers and obtained level 2 or above in 81 of them representing a qualifying rate of some 98.8% of all papers taken. Among the 15 young persons in custody, two actually met the general entrance requirements for local universities. Public acceptance uh, would be very helpful in them um, uh, reintegrating into society through public education, publicity. We have been promoting uh, rehabilitation of um, ex-offenders uh, and uh, we have also arranged for uh, students, teachers, social workers to pay visits to penal institutions to have a direct dialogue with the persons in custody and, uh, and we have also organized um, uh, a drama program for them so that uh, young people will have a better understanding of the harm that can be done to the ex-offenders and uh, they would also be given the message to accept them. The um, CST will continue to actively review and enhance the various types of rehabilitation services and programs in the light of social changes and needs, as well as making proactive efforts in promoting rehabilitation work. Our details can be found in the paper. We welcome questions from members. Thank you. May I remind members that our secretary has also prepared a paper bracket 06 as a background brief on this topic. The following members would like to ask questions. There are five Emily Lau, and Jiang, Kenneth Chen, Christopher Zhong, Fernando Zhang, uh, Frankie Yu, and uh, also Mr. Lang Kok Hong, uh, seven or nine. nine. And we have to end at 4.30. All right, four minutes each. Ms. Amri Lau, thank you, Chairman. I think uh, the administration's uh, work in uh, this regard uh, should be able to help uh, both uh, rehabilitated persons and the community because in Hong Kong we have a shortage of labor in many trades. All right, you have listed out a number of trades and you have also uh, discussed with employer associations. So you do have the consensus that they are manpower short and you also help to train rehabilit persons in custody. So that, can you tell us uh, their success rate in employment and can you tell us uh, whether employers are satisfied or is there uh, still room for improvement? Can I uh, ask the CSD to reply? Thank you. First, we will liaise with uh, organizations such as the uh, Yao, B, V, T, C, and C, I, C. We maintain very close liaison with them to uh, take stock of the uh, current labor situation. We hope to organize programs that will help them to obtain qualifications. Such qualifications or certificates are very useful for them to find jobs. Ms. Amli Lau asked about their employment situation after release. In the past five years, our cases are among our 1,800 cases that were willing to receive our follow-up, 83% of them got a job as within six months after discharge or release. From time to time, we review the current labor situation and uh, to see uh, to find out trades that are more in need of manpower. We also consider uh, the security and uh, situation in our penal institutions to see whether we could provide uh, the relevant training. If everything uh, permits, uh, we will offer the relevant training. Have you received 
information of discrimination against released persons. Uh, for instance, they've already received training, but the employers are willing to employ them. From time to time, we hear such complaints, and the situation is improving. What have you done to help them? As I said, we have a lot of publicity in the community. For instance, on 26th of September, we uh, held an interview, a joint uh, of co um, uh, a conference uh, with two associations. We encourage employers to hire released or rehabilitated persons. As I mentioned, over 300 employers have registered as clearing employers, providing over 3,000 vacancies. Uh, I'd like to know whether uh, any of them has run into problem after being hired. Uh, have you uh, tried to uh, done your very best to help them to be employed? As I said, some are under our supervision uh, after release. If they have problems in finding jobs, uh, we will offer assistance at once. We'll try to find them jobs from caring employers. For those not under our supervision, if it's necessary, they can come to us for help, and uh, we can also make referrals. Dr. Anjang. With regard to uh, employment of rehabilitated persons, I think there are two groups of people with uh, particular difficulties. I don't know whether you have statistics. Uh, first, uh, drug addicts. Uh, after they've returned to uh, their homes, well, they might uh, have already uh, been rehabilitated when uh, in custody, but they uh, become abusers again. In our community uh, program, we try to help these people. They they want they try hard, but then because uh, or, or because uh, they, of uh, their living environment, they may become drug addicts very soon. Drug addicts again very soon. And for ethnic minorities, I like to know whether they can be trained special gil skills or language when they are in custody. For instance, in Hong Kong, uh, ethnic minorities are weaker in uh, English and uh, Chinese proficiency. So can you give them some help so that they can um, be more f proficient in these two languages so that young people can either continue their studies or find jobs. First, uh, ex uh, drug addicts and their employment situation after release. Uh, usually, uh, such a person will receive one year supervision from us. So they will try to find jobs on their own, and if they fail, our colleagues will help them at once. Uh, regarding uh, their accommodation, if they have difficulty in accommodation, we will ask NGOs uh, such as uh, the uh, Society of Rehabilitation and Crime Rehabilitation uh, to help them. Uh, they can give them hostels before they can find their own accommodation. And as for ethnic minorities and uh, vocational training they receive, if they are qualified to apply for vocational training, then they can join other local uh, prisoners that are qualified and receive training. But what about their language proficiency? That is their weakest area. We also uh, provide courses for them to learn, for instance, English or Cantonese to uh, facilitate communication with uh, other persons uh, in custody and to uh, take part in rehabilitative services. What about the uh, relapse rate 
of drug addicts after release, and how long can they uh, remain in one job? The success rate we will consider uh, a one year period if if a person uh, picks picks up the habit again within one year or is uh, arrested for an offense then in take this year out of a hundred uh forty six point eight percent has been successful well, what do you mean uh so within a one year they have not either kicked up uh, picked up the habit again or um uh, suffer from or recidivism Professor Kenneth Chen, I think LegCo would welcome uh, any measure to help rehabilitated persons uh, to rejoin society by picking up uh, their study again or to join the workforce. I'd like to know whether all persons in custody are qualified because you have 300 employers registered as clerk caring employers and about 400 persons in custody are applying for jobs and around 100 persons in custody have been provided job offers. Do you think this is good enough? If not, uh, what more can you do to improve the situation? Uh, for instance, can you offer more assistance so that more persons in custody would be willing to join this scheme and uh, in the process can you provide more support to help them to uh, prepare for interviews so that they can have a higher chance of being hired and uh, do you have any uh, coordinating service to help them to um, face uh, various challenges at work such as discrimination and uh, unequal pay for uh, the uh, same amount of work have you got have you identified the uh, shortcomings in your current program and uh, corresponding improvement measures for a uh, vocational training would uh, the focus uh, is uh, local persons in custody uh, with a term of 3 to 24 months. In the um, job uh, conference, in the job fair, 400 persons uh, in custody applied for jobs and 100 persons got job offers. I think. Uh, Things uh, could be better. We want all uh, persons in custody uh, could be successfully employed. I think the uh, higher the success rate, the better. But the question is, it uh, is a long and winding road for employers to accept rehabilitated persons. It's not that they will uh, buy in the message overnight. We have to do it bit by bit. in the past, uh, job fairs uh, had a much smaller turnout rate. So within a few years, uh, things have improved a lot. But of course, we are not complacent. Our target is uh, for all rehabilitated persons to be successful in finding jobs. And what do we do to encourage employers? One of our measures is to uh, hold uh, publicity campaigns uh, such as the video conferencing job fairs and uh, with real time uh, interviews. And in uh, universities, we organize uh, seminars. We invite all employers that have employed rehabilitated persons to share the experience. And we also invite rehabilitated persons to uh, tell us how uh, their employers have helped them. We will also invite potential employers who are interested to uh, join the seminars to uh, make the idea uh, more acceptable. 
Uh, please give us supplementary information on our plans you have. I hope it will not be just a one-off event. Uh, we want uh, the whole community uh, join in as a whole to help rehabilitated persons. Mr. Christopher Jung to be followed by Dr. Fernando Jung. Thank you, Chairman. I've come across a few cases showing that rehabilitation pers rehabilitated persons are still uh, victims of discrimination. For instance, uh, some of them uh, could not open bank accounts. They were rejected by banks. This is a big problem because a person uh, who uh, has served his term uh, is already rehabilitated. So even if uh, they are hired, they cannot get paid because most employers uh, pay by either check or uh, auto pay into bank accounts. Still, they have re uh, they have rehabilitated. So even the banking sector would have to admit that uh, they have been rehabilitated. Or else, uh, are you suggesting that uh, that they is not? Uh, been successful in rehabilitating them, or the CSD would have to admit that as well. So why can't uh, the CSD talk to the chair as to helping these uh, rehabilitated persons uh, in opening a bank account? So uh, why can't you answer that question? I think, Chairman, you would have to you will have to answer the question too. So uh, let's first. Uh, have a reply from the officials first uh, before I take up the question. Yes, thank you, Chairman. With regard to the difficulty experienced uh, by some rehabilitated persons in opening up bank accounts, uh, I don't. I haven't got the details. I haven't heard about this. So, was it very prevalent? Is it that um, all ex-offenders have not been able to open up uh, bank accounts or what? So. Can I be given more details? Well, I'm not supposed to answer the question today, so I can only give you some information for reference. So that's uh, uh, for Mr. Chong. Well, for political figures, uh, they will have to um, go through some form of vetting before they can open up or they can open an account. But then for people who have been in jail, usually the banks uh, don't have access to such information. But then if you ask whether or not uh, 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 this, well, they might have been known to the banks because uh, um, they might have been known to the media because of previous uh, reports and um, maybe. So I'm sure the CSD can take it up with the banks. I'm sure that can be resolved. I haven't seen such situation uh, myself. Uh, Chairman, I've experienced. Uh, I've uh, come across three cases. One was a, a woman, a woman who had had uh, her bank card used by her girlfriend, and she was accused of uh, money laundering. So we're just talking about tens of thousands of dollars, and uh, she was sentenced uh, to uh, about a year's uh, jail. And then after her release, uh, she was not able to open a bank account when compared to um, fraud. Uh, or anything to do with money laundering, well, your banks would not allow the persons to open a bank account. This is double jeopardy. This is double punishment. Or you have no faith in the rehabilitation service provided by the CSD at all. So I think the administration has the duty to take it up with banks or else, or whatever you call it, whatever rehabilitation is not going, is just a futile. You're not going to yield results at all. Next, uh, Fernando Jiang, and then UC Wing. Chairman, what we are concerned about is that uh, for many of the um, ex-offenders, well, a number of years ago, SoCo did a survey, and uh, it's found that uh, on average they only had about three hundred dollars in their pocket, and uh, a quarter of them, after their release, had to become street sleepers, and about forty-five percent of them had to. Uh, borrow money from their family and uh, relatives during the first month. So this is most undesirable. And they've also found that uh, only about 8% of the post-release offenders had undergone some form of um, vocational training. That's because um, their jail term was too short for, well, let's say uh, if it's six months 
or up to two years, so the line might be drawn at two years. So the CSD might wish to clarify, and in their answer to Ms. Emily Lau's question, they said that the success rate in finding jobs was quite high. About 1,800 people managed to find jobs, so it's 83 percent in terms of success rate. But then every year, how many people are released from jail? All right, if you're talking about 1,800 in five years, so you're just talking about some uh, 300 persons. So how many uh, uh, prisoners have been released um, every year? Well, at present, in terms of vocational training, uh, where the line is drawn. Well, as I just said, if the jail term is in excess of six months, or if the remaining term is uh, from three to 24 months, then they can apply to undergo uh, vocational training courses. Why do we have to draw a line there? Because uh, for vocational training programs, um, it will take some time for them to complete the courses. In some cases, uh, it would last up to 100 days. In other words, if the uh, sentence uh, term is too short, then they might not be able to complete the training program. That's the first consideration. Second, as we just said, um, 8% would be suitable for accepting vocational training. I don't agree with that view because every year, well, for the application rate by the persons in custody, and also if you look at uh, the um, uh, the prisoner population, and then we'll uh, look at the number of places available every year. For example, in 2014 to 15, this is um, well, we have uh, got uh, some 1,400 places. But how many of them would be eligible? Well, there are there are some 2,700 plus. In other words, some 60 percent of them are eligible for uh, undergoing such training. How about those uh, who are not eligible? How many are not eligible? Well, for those who are not, who are not eligible, as I just said, or well, the jail term might be less than six months, or they might be foreigners, and after serving their jail sentence, they will have to be uh, re uh, they will have to be uh, deported. How many are there? I don't have the information with me. I can provide the information after the meeting. So. Um, uh, how many people are there in uh, behind the bar? Uh, well, 8,500. So basically, out of 8,000 plus, uh, 2,700 would be eligible for job training. And then uh, out of the 2,700, you said that during the past five years, uh, 1,800 uh, managed to find jobs. Is that right? Because majority of the um, detainees, after they have left uh, the institutions, most of them would not be subjected uh, to our supervision. That's why we are not supposed to get in touch with them. The reason why we have been able to follow up on those cases, because after they have completed our job training programs, we would require them to allow us to uh, follow up on their cases. Some, so some voluntary agencies would be follow up following up on their cases, and uh, within five years, uh, for those uh, that we managed to come into contact with, uh, some 1,800 managed to find jobs, so 83 percent success rate. How did you come up with that figure? So what is the base figure, and uh, how did you come up with this figure? Next, uh, Yu Si Wing and then Lang Kuo Hong. Thank you, Chairman. Well, for the detainees, uh, you're offering them with job training that would help them reintegrate into society, and that would also help the community as a whole because the current employment situation is very tight. There are many employers who are not able to find or recruit employees. And in a paper, you said that um, there are some 30 job types um, where job training programs are available, and the scope is pretty broad. So during the past two years or so, if you look at the number of our trainees, uh, have you conducted um, any uh, studies on which programs are more popular amongst them? And after you have conducted uh, those studies, will you be speeding up those programs, increasing the number of uh, places? And then for the less popular programs, do you have other considerations? Yes, Mr. Wu. Well, uh, we do conduct reviews uh, from time to time because uh, if uh, programs are not popular, then that would be a waste of resources. And uh, on the whole, are there any programs that are more popular, for example, catering, because um, 
uh, it would be easy to find jobs when they are released. That's why we'll be beefing up those programs uh, so that more courses can be offered. As to whether or not uh, there are courses that are not popular or people have difficulty finding jobs after completing those programs, uh, we'll change that after we have found out uh, uh, that they are not popular or we would change the mode. For example, in 2013-14, as mentioned in the paper, we have organized uh, some construction um, industry programs and then this year we have also organized a professional taxi driver written test training course and there were also some programs uh, for um, carers, so there were some health care services programs, so where there are new requirements in the job market or new programs available suitable for the uh, detainees, then we would also offer them, and as to the number of places, that would also be adjusted accordingly. So which programs have been cut? Because some uh, members would like to know if there are unpopular programs that have been cut in order to save money. Well, when we came up with those ideas, uh, well, there is no question of nobody applying for them because we have always thought about uh, the continuity as to whether or not there were courses that have been cut during the past few years. As far as my recollection serves me, no. All right, within the business sector, we would also like to know which programs are more popular because uh, in the tourism sector, I understand that there are programs, but then are they popular? So can you tell us... Uh, can you provide us with the figures so that uh, we will have a better idea so that the tourism sector can also uh, enhance uh, their uh, communication with you? Well, as far as the tourism sector is concerned, we have offered uh, a program in one of our institutions and the response was quite good. And during the past uh, few months, uh, one class graduated. So we will continue to run such programs. So can you provide the figures? Uh, you can also talk to the Chambers of Commerce. Yes. Well, in the Secretariat's paper, Para 11, you talk about March 2011 in an institution. They had this um, special service uh, that's called the Psychological Gymnasium. And uh, why is it confined to female? Do you have plans to extend it to other penal institutions? Yes, uh, between... 2011 and now, we have about uh, we have over 140 female adult persons in custody um, uh, accepting this service, and the response has been quite good. And we can see that uh, their behavior uh, while they are in custody has also improved. As to whether or not this will be extended to other institutions or to um, the opposite gender. All right, uh, since 2011, we introduced this uh, gymnasium, and uh, we are now conducting a review. And we are also working with our colleagues to see if uh, that should be extended uh, to uh, male adult persons in custody. That's being considered. Next, uh, Lan Kuo Hong, and then Lan Tai Fai. I'd like to put this to the administration or the department. Can you provide the figures? All right, uh, in offering rehabilitation services, in terms of its spending. So when compared to the operational costs uh, for running penal institutions, uh, what's the ratio? How much have you spent on rehabilitation services? With regard to the annual spending on rehabilitation, well, that's uh, covered by the reintegration into society. It's $900 million. So um, what's the percentage vis-a-vis uh, -vis your total spending? We haven't got that figure. We can provide that later. I think that's important because if it's just um, um, a drop in the bucket, then of course um, we will have to consider it. So if it's just a drop in the bucket, we will have to consider how big the drop is. And if it's just accounting for a very small share, then of course uh, there is no need for us to discuss it because you simply do not have enough money to run such courses. And I believe that uh, that spending would definitely be accounting for a very low proportion of your total spending. What I'm interested in, well, for the um, drug abusers, all right, uh, what's the success rate? So the recidivism, recidivism rate uh, should be lower than 50%. Are you happy with that? As, as I just said, I hope that the success rate uh, would improve. We will not be complacent uh, even if it stays at a certain level. And I hope that uh, that can uh, go up even further. With regard to um, ex drug addicts, when compared to other 
uh, uh, rehabilitated uh, persons uh, is somewhat more difficult because, after all, there are different reasons uh, attributing to drug abuse as to whether or not they can kick the habits uh, successfully and then uh, they would not go back to drugs again. There are different factors for consideration. Number one, well, what's the drug abuse history and the background to their drug abuse? They might have been abusing drugs for more than 10 years and it's hard uh, for them to turn over a new leaf overnight. And also, second is about their wrong resolve or determination. And next is about the support from their family and the community as a whole. And fourth, in a community, what's the prevalence of drug abuse? That would also directly affect uh, if uh, they would be successful in kicking the habit. So you've also highlighted one thing, that is after the release, all right, uh, within the institution, of course, uh, there is no chance that they can abuse the drugs again. How can they abuse the drugs? So supposedly, uh, they should not be able to abuse drugs uh, while they are uh, in custody. So. So uh, they may uh, relapse after they are uh, discharged. So uh, aftercare is very important. If they don't have no, they don't have any money or accommodation. Uh, so you have uh, to uh, take care. Uh, you have to address this problem. If they have no hostel or no money. Yes, Mr. Lamta, if I'm going to set up a fund, I would donate one dollar to it. Can you um, do more about this? I think everyone uh, wants to be released, but things are very different once they are out. So there must be a right environment outside uh, the prison to help him to get rid of his bad habit. This is crucial. If you don't do anything about this, I can uh, be more than 100 percent sure. Well, they can't even have an address, not to mention a bank account, for instance. Uh, they might want uh, to uh, to um, to ha help uh, to help in uh, food delivery, but uh, the employer cannot inform them because they have no address. Mr. Lam Tai Fai, thank you. I think no one will object that rehabilitation service is most important because if you do not do it well, then a person released will have difficulty adapting to society. So it's not easy for him to turn over new leaf. In Hong Kong, um, our mobility is limited, and uh, if uh, you have a criminal uh, record, then it's doubly difficult. So we must work harder to help them. As we all know, Hong Kong is also developing rapidly, and therefore rehabilitation services uh, must catch up with time. We have uh, to. Uh, carefully attract uh, new job requirements and skills requirement because if what they learn in prisons cannot be used in society, then they have no choice uh, but to uh, go back uh, to uh, committing crime and the damage to society can even be bigger. So rehabilitation services must closely uh, track what skills are required in society. I understand that you are not a commercial organization. You may not be able to have a master's uh, in time to train uh, the prisoners. You need uh, teachers and uh, masters and facilities. It is hard for you to adapt. I've uh, visited prisons myself after it is my duty. And I think the jobs uh, training offered are mainly uh, blue collar jobs, uh, such as a taxi driver, taxi written test, and also a Hong Kong style cafe operation. Well, but there are prisoners who used to be white collar workers. Uh, IT computer develops very quickly. Do you have job training 
for white collar workers so that they can upgrade their value and uh, rejoin the workforce again. Members are concerned about uh, the employment rate. Well, getting a job is one aspect, but finding a job that suits his skills learned in the prison is another thing. For instance, if you receive training on Hong Kong style cafe operation in the prison, and uh, yet you go to a security, uh, you work as a security guard, then the two things are very different. So, the employment rate alone may not fully reflect the success or otherwise of your rehabilitative services. So, have you done any analysis on this? Otherwise. Well, uh, you can uh, train him uh, to uh, be uh, a timber form worker or to learn uh, painting and polishing when, in fact, uh, this skill is not required in society. The question is whether uh, our staff uh, will be responsible for all training courses. The answer is no. As Mr. Lam said, the market is always changing. If we recruit somebody specially tasked to do to provide this particular t kind of training, we may not be able to uh, catch up with the market in time. So we usually cooperate with the uh, employees retraining board, the vocational training council, and they will send staff to run the courses. If the course itself is no longer popular, it will be cut at once so that we will not have redundant staff. That used to be the case. I think uh, the uh, Manufacturers Association can uh, find more jobs for you. Ms. Elizabeth Quatt. Of course, we want to uh, release the prisoners uh, to turn over a new leaf and to be self-reliant and therefore support the rehabilitative work of the CSD. Mr. Long Kwa Hong and Dr. Fernando Zhang are concerned that some released persons do not have any savings, uh, they have nowhere to live after release, and if they cannot find jobs in time, will a CSD provide some uh, to help them to tie over the transitional period. And uh, you may also help them uh, to find jobs. For instance, 83% of your released persons uh, were able to find jobs within six months. I'd like to know whether you would follow up on them. Uh, were they able to stay in their jobs long? And did you have any uh, support services afterwards? As regards how you can increase the number of caring employers, you did say that you are not uh, satisfied with the situation yet. So will you provide more incentive and uh, cooperate with more associations so as to recruit more caring employers? And for some jobs, it takes longer. It takes longer uh, for certs to be obtained. So, will you uh, have any um, top-up courses uh, from VTCs and ERB so that after released, these uh, persons uh, can join these forces? Some of these courses offer allowances as well. If really, if a released person has a financial problem or accommodation problem, then we will first ask NGOs to help, uh, such as the uh, Society of Rehabilitation and Crime Prevention. If uh, the person has nowhere to live, uh, the society can offer temporary accommodation and uh, financial assistance on a temporary basis. It is not much, but um, the hope is that the person can find job within a s short period of time. And uh, these persons are under our supervision for one year after discharge or after release. If they have difficulties in finding jobs, our colleagues will help them in the first instance. This is part of our duties.
and uh, will we discuss with uh, employers we have been doing this we have been discussing with different uh, associations for instance in September uh, with the Chinese Manufacturers Association of Hong Kong and Merchants Support for Rehabilitated Officers Committee we've organized a video conferencing job fair so we hope that these associations can take the lead so that more employers are willing to join our program. This is our target. Uh, my question on uh, VTC not answered. Uh, most of uh, the courses completed inside uh, prisons have an have, um, higher level uh, course available in VTC. You provide a one-year follow-up of released prisoners. Can you give us statistics to uh, tell us whether there are difficulties? For instance, uh, even if they are willing, are they able to find a job within uh, six months? How long could they stay in those jobs? All right, we can provide information later. Mr. Wong, your command. Uh, your services must uh, be more um, concrete in its effect. For instance, in this paper, we do not see any uh, concrete statistics. We rely on the community to support them. If uh, these rehabilitated serv per uh, persons want to turn a new leaf, because if they suffer discrimination, they uh, may not be able to cope and they may be um, driven uh, to commit crimes again. Now, you have a uh, few schemes to enhance the acceptance of rehabilitated persons. The first rehabilitation pioneers project, you're only asking students not to break the law. You want them to understand the uh, harm of uh, breaking the law. What has this got to do with acceptance of rehabilitated persons? You are just uh, telling us some uh, thing routine because this project is not about enhancing acceptance of these persons. Rather, you're trying to teach young people not to break the law because they can be imprisoned if they do so. And the Greenhaven scheme is just the same. And well, you take them to the Drug Prevention and Environmental uh, Prevention Resource Center. You tell us the number of students and social workers uh, who have visited uh, the island. So what? It is not about acceptance of rehabilitated persons. I just want to point out that you have not done anything concrete. Of course, the CSD uh, has to do this and that on a daily basis. You have to liaise with NGOs. But what about the outcome? We are concerned as to the outcome or effectiveness of your services. Of course, after receiving skills training, uh, they will find it easier to be employed. So it's good to offer uh, industries training. But uh, some trades uh, such as a uh, garment, uh, and knitting and making of leather products. Are there really such jobs available in the market? Your training uh, must be targeted at the market. You should not just um, do it as a routine. What about the service industries and construction sector? They have acute manpower shortage. Uh, all right, I'll give him one minute to answer. My question is very simple. How can you enhance the public acceptance of rehabilitated persons? What you're doing now is not successful. Secondly, when you train the prisoners, you have to ensure that uh, they are taught skills sought after in the job market nowadays. Yes, I want uh, sectors of different uh, different sectors of the community to accept uh, rehabilitated persons. So we reach out not just to the businessmen, but to uh, different sectors of the community. S under the Rehabilitation Pioneer Project, we arrange visits 
for students to visit our penal institutions to let them understand how hard life is. So uh, we want to uh, support rehabilitation. We want to uh, fight crime. And there is a sharing session between students and persons in custody so that they will understand why uh, these people broke the law in the first place. All right, I, I don't want to hear you continue. Of course, what you do is just to educate young people not to break the law. But how is this going to enhance society acceptance for these people? Well, uh, when the kids uh, saw how um, hard life was in the prison, uh, they uh, would think twice before breaking the law. But how useful it is in uh, acceptance, in uh, an enhancing acceptance of rehabilitated persons. All right. uh, Ms. Zhang and Dr. Fernando Zhang, one minute each, a second round. Oh. I have a suggestion, Chairman. I'd like to know this. That is, uh, what's the percentage of uh, prisoners who have been imprisoned for the first time? I haven't got the information with me. I can supply that later. The reason why I raised this because recently I saw a research um, in overseas jurisdiction. Or according to the findings, Let's say if uh, you've committed uh, some petty crimes, for example, just uh, two women fighting with each other, and in the end uh, both were sentenced uh, to jail for several months. So should that be done? Should they have been sent to jail? Because, uh, well, they might have uh, done something um, on the spur of the moment. But then if you look at their very nature, they are not prone to committing offences. But then once they are sentenced to jail, after they have come into contact uh, with some prisoners, uh, they might have acquired something which they would not have acquired uh, during their normal life. And uh, with there would also be this uh, stigmatization effect. And as a result, uh, they would be labelled for the rest of their lives. So is it time for us to consider the, consider the whole thing? You should also come up with some recommendations for the community as a whole to look at or to consider. That is, uh, in certain circumstances, maybe it's better not to sentence people to jail because you're talking about rehabilitation. But then if something can be done before people are sentenced to jail, would that have been better? Would you be conducting researches and so on? Please jot that down. Uh, please give me a reply <coughs> so that uh, under matters arising, we can also take it up again. Yes, Fernando Zhang. Chairman, they um, are organizing caring employers uh, campaign, and the administration has been doing a lot of outsourcing work. Can you be more positive yourself? Can you be more proactive so that uh, in your outsourcing contracts, uh, if employers are willing to hire uh, post-release offenders or rehabilitated persons, then can you give them additional scores so that uh, they would have an incentive to employ or recruit uh, these people? All right, uh, for outsource workers, you have to conduct an uh, 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 integrity check, and as a result, the outsource worker lost his job. So because uh, in doing so, actually, you would be indirectly discriminating against the ex-offenders. And also, would you offer this incentive to the caring employers so that uh, they would be even more caring under your system? All right, such suggestions can be taken on board. Why don't you allow him to answer the question? Uh, you have taken up all my time. I think there's still time left. Well, as far as I'm aware, for outsourced workers, uh, they are not government workers. With regard to civil servants recruitment exercise, uh, the rules and regulations would not apply. In some cases, in the recruitment exercise uh, for civil servants, even if there is a requirement on integrity check, uh, that would not apply to outsourced workers. All right, I'm sure the administration has taken on board uh, your suggestions and comments, so let's wrap up our discussion. Finally, um, AOB, nothing under AOB, so I, uh, I now adjourn the meeting. Thank you.